Here with Reaction, the host of Cudlow on the Fox Business Network uh, Business Channel, Larry Cudlow, along with former senior Clinton advisor and pollster Mark Penn and Fox News contributor Kellyanne Conway. And Kellyanne, we start with you. Between the issue, if you look at the border, and I know the, the, the giggling trio of conspiracy theorists at MSNBC, they laughed at the exit polls that showed the state of Virginia that the number one issue on, on the minds of people in Virginia was immigration, uh, where a 14-year-old girl was raped by an illegal immigrant, uh, this on the heels of what happened to Lake and Riley. By the way, not Lincoln, Lake and Riley. And, you know, I raise this because are they really that out of touch with the American people on this issue? Are they out yes. of touch with how they feel? Yes, they are, and no one more so than Joe Biden and his so-called border czar, Kamala Harris. The polls show this. The disaffection with Joe Biden is coming from inside the House. He is underperforming Donald Trump in all six swing states, and particularly as goes each man vis-a-vis -vis their party. So Joe Biden averages somewhere in the 70s, low to mid-70s in terms of Democratic support in each of the swing, six swing states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. Donald Trump is anywhere from 81 percent to 91 percent. Why is that important? Because if you have attrition in your core constituencies, African-Americans, Hispanics, uh, women, people in the suburbs, young people, political independents, you open up you expose yourself to third-party challenges. RFK Jr., Jill Stein, and Cornell West are all eating into Joe Biden. None of them are really taking anything significant from Donald Trump in terms of vote tally. You mentioned Nevada. This is important. A Republican has not carried the state of Nevada presidentially since 2004, 20 years ago. Donald Trump is beating Joe Biden in the polls in Nevada. Nevada has the, um, the highest unemployment rate, one of the ha highest housing costs compared to wages in the country, and it is the only state that went from a blue governor, a Democratic governor, to Republican governor in 2022. That's the kind of state that Donald Trump can flip, and it's all because of what you're showing. People know what they see, not what the Democrats say. They see the borders out of control. 60 percent disapprove of Joe Biden's handling of Israel, over 60 percent disapprove of his handling of the economy and inflation and separately of the border and immigration. It's not a big mystery. No, Mark, Pen Mark, you've been doing polling like Kellyanne for a long time. I, we really saw this on display in, in the strongest way during the State of the Union or jacked up Joe. And, and that was he was going so hardcore after his base there was no reaching across the aisle. This, this was a speech I'd expect at a, at a convention at the DNC. And he, Biden is down 22 points with Hispanic Americans right now from where he was in 2020. He is down 30 points with African Americans, double digits he's down with suburban women and young people. That is the base of the Democratic coalition. I don't know, uh, what is he, what can he say or do to get those people back? Maybe half of them will return home. But the people that are feeling the economy, that don't like what they're seeing on their screen right now with immigration, the people that don't like what's going on worldwide in America abdicating its role on the world stage, uh, the price of everything, law and order is deteriorating in, in big cities and small towns, they're looking at their lives and they're not saying they're better off than they were four years ago. How does he get those people back? Or can he? Well, uh, well, well, I think you're quite right that that Joe Biden has to look more at the center of the country the than the suburbs and those swing voters and not worry so much about the base. Don't worry. Those base voters will come back in the end when they're faced with a stark choice between Democrats and Republicans and Trump and Biden. But, but he's got to do more. He's got to solve the immigration problem because that has skyrocketed to number one. He's got to do something about the inflation and the high housing Mark, prices that I, are really give affecting you all your time. People's Hang on a second. Everyday lives. For three years, he said the border is safe and closed and secure. He lied. Now he's trying to blame Republicans. You're saying that in the final 228 days, he can all of a sudden pull out of his hat an answer to the border crisis he himself created? I don't believe that's possible. 
Well, uh, look, I think the polls, and I agree with Kellyanne on this, his lowest ratings right now are on immigration, which didn't matter much during most of that three years. But now that it's shot up to be the top issue of the country, he's got to do a better job addressing it. He's got to really both show compassion to people like DACA recipients, but most importantly, do something about what most voters think is an open border. I don't think he has any choice. It's the absolute key to what he's got to do to try to get back here to even. He's just losing by Donald Trump by a few points, and immigration is that number one issue. He's got to address inflation, got to address crime, education. Sure, he's got core issues like abortion and climate change, but we know those. Rally the base at the end, go for swing voters now. Uh, I'm, I'm listening to you, but I, I, I'm sure you're right that some of those people will come home, but I'm sure many won't either. And I would argue, Larry Kudlow, that the reason they will not be so inclined to get home, because they don't like what they're seeing on the border, they don't like what they see in their grocery store, they don't like that their their dollar is not going anywhere near as far as it was four years ago, uh, they don't like defund, dismantle, and no bail laws, they don't like high gas prices, they don't like any of it. Why should they? Well, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for having me. And I want to go back to those pictures, incredible pictures. That is an invasion of the state of Texas, and it is an invasion of the United States by a mob, a mob of illegals. And that picture, which runs throughout the country, is a message that there is no safety, no security, and no law and order. I mean, Trump calls it Biden's immigration crime. And that crime is not just down there in El Paso or Texas. That crime has become nationwide. You know, the story in New York, four and a half billion dollars uh, of uh, stolen goods from the stores. Uh, who knows? It probably is even greater than that. So that picture is important. Mark Penn is a very smart guy, and he's an old friend of mine. But the fact remains, Biden will not close the border. When he was inaugurated, the next couple days, he undid by executive orders all of the Trump guards against the kind of picture we're seeing in El Paso. He took out the remain in Mexico. Uh, he took out the wall. He increased the parole. He increased the asylum. And again, it's not just the fact that all these illegal mobs are coming in, which is bad enough. It just sends a picture that there is no law, no order, no safety, no security. And remember, Trump is building this phenomenal middle class working folks coalition of whites, of Latino, Hispanics, of blacks. Take a look at the numbers. They're phenomenal. These are people who are losing money. Their real wages are going down. Prices are still high, 20 percent increase in the CPI, 20 percent increase in groceries, 30 percent increase in energy. Their mortgage rates and mortgage costs, if they want to buy a home, over 7 percent on the rate. It probably cost you another 12, 1500 bucks than it did a year ago, uh, three years ago. Car purchases, you got to pay about 10 percent on that rate. Credit card purchases, you got to pay about 25 percent on that rate. So you have these economic yep. pressures, you have these fears of law and order, and you have pictures of literally an invasion of the United States by a lawless mob. It is absolutely astounding, and I do not think Biden will lift one finger to change that. I don't see any evidence that he wants he to can. change that. That, that ship has sailed. And like you, I've known, I've known Mark a long time. Mark, you're going to smile because you know what I'm about to say is true. You would have told him to pivot two and a half years ago. True or false? Last answer. Yes. Yes. There you uh, go. Absolutely right. true. Yes. I've been saying this for a yes. while. Pivot yes. to the middle. That's it. That's where this election well, is going to be decided. He didn't listen and he can't catch up. That ship has sailed. That's my prediction. Let's see who's right. All right. Thank you all. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.